Long Beach, 2014. He's a nice old man. I remember the first break-in. They literally tore down the front door. Dorothy Greer told us they'd been victimized at least four times in that house before. Once while she was at home. But she never expected the violence he described in our report. But they say his collarbone's broken. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. That's, that looks bad. Right there. I keep thousands of dollars in there. Yeah. 22,000, 15,000. You have no regrets about this, do you? None whatsoever. A few months earlier, in the Sunrise neighborhood of Long Beach, an elderly man was eating alone at a fast food restaurant, likely one of these. Eating, he was approached by Andrea Miller, 28, who was desperate for help. She told him she had just been mugged and needed anything she could get. The old man gave her $30. She asks him to give her his phone number, which he also does. Later that day, Andrea calls the old man and asks him for more money, and he gives her $300 more. The very next day, Andrea tells him, My mom died, and I need $22,000 to bury her. The nice old man believes her, so they go together to the bank. He tries dutifully to get her the money in cash, but the bank won't give him the funds, offering him a cashier's check made out to the funeral home instead. Andrea refuses this. So Andrea and the man go to a casino, thinking that it'll be an easy place to withdraw the money, this time from his credit card. Andrea acts oddly, though, avoiding surveillance cameras and trying to keep her face and identity hidden. So the casino denied her request because of her suspicious behavior. A few days later, Andrea calls the man again asking for more money. This time, a concerned neighbor calls the police. The old man tells her to come over that night, and he would give her a few hundred bucks. This time, she brought her presumed boyfriend, Gus Adams, 26. When the couple arrived at the man's house around 825, they were immediately arrested and booked on suspicion of committing, receiving funds under false pretenses, embezzlement, and extortion. Unfortunately, there's just not enough evidence to charge them, so Andrea is released from jail, and Gus stays in jail for a little while longer because he had a warrant out for driving with a suspended license. But he too is released on May 21st, 2014. Once released, they turn their sights to a new target. Tom Greer, 80, lives in the Los Cerritos neighborhood of Long Beach, which is just a couple miles from Sunrise where Andrea met the aforementioned victim. His home had been robbed at least three times in the last year, and he believes it's consistently been the same people who he fears will return again. Two of the burglaries were reported to police, one was not. Frustrated with this, he moved the safe key after the last robbery. He says that he often keeps thousands of dollars on the premises. On July 22, 2014, Tom Greer is working late, and Andrea and Gus make their move. Somewhere between 8.30 and 9 p.m., Andrea, Gus, and another female pull up near Tom Greer's house. Andrea and Gus get out and proceed to break into Tom's house by crawling in through a window. After looking for the safe key and failing because it's been moved, they begin working to tear the safe in Tom's home office apart. Around 9 p.m., Tom returns home, and as he comes in the door, Andrea and Gus jump on him in the hallway outside the office, attacking him. They mercilessly pummel the old man with their fists, then body slam him to the ground. Tom's right collarbone is broken. Gus returns to the office to keep working on the safe. Meanwhile, Andrea continues to beat up Tom, forcing him to watch Gus try to break into his safe. Tom thinks to himself, oh, how am I going to get out of this mess? Believing Tom is incapacitated and frightened, Andrea goes back to the office to help Gus break into the safe. Gus needs something more to bend the metal of the safe door. Tom tells him there's a crowbar in the garage, and to quote, go down and help yourself in the garage. So Gus goes down to the garage to dig through the tools. Andrea watches Gus get the crowbar from the basement and begin to bend the safe door open far enough that they can put about an arm in. Meanwhile, Tom sneaks into another room, where he grabs a 22 caliber Smith & Wesson. He strolls back into the office, where they've bent open part of the safe. They notice Tom and that he has a gun. He fires at them. Gus and Andrea grab whatever they can out of the safe, then flee. Tom chases them out of the door near his garage. Gus is quickly out of there, but Andrea straggles behind him. So despite the injuries that he sustained at his age, Tom gets within 10 feet or so of Andrea, right outside of his door. He aims and fires at Andrea right there in the middle of his driveway. The 22 caliber bullet hits Andrea in the back, and she falls down in front of him. Tom runs out into the alley and shoots at Gus. But Gus is already pretty far away and manages to flee the bullets. Tom returns to Andrea, and Andrea begs for her life. She says, don't shoot me, I'm pregnant, I'm with a baby, and I shot her anyway. Now running on pure adrenaline, Tom pulls Andrea's corpse into the garage in an attempt to lure Gus back to the house. Momentarily, Gus does come back, and they fight over the gun and Tom's cell phone. After a scuffle, Gus takes the gun and the phone and rushes off into the getaway car, leaving Andrea's corpse in Tom's garage. Eventually, the police arrive and take note of the situation. When they got there, officers found a deceased female and an elderly male subject who told officers that he shot the woman 
after she broke into his home. All of a sudden, I hear these high-pitched gunshots, and, uh, you know, I hear some screaming after that, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Andrea is dead. She was dead. Well, yeah, I shot her twice. She best be dead. Gus is arrested shortly after the burglary. A little while later, they also arrest Gus's mother, Ruby Adams, 50, for acting as the lookout and the getaway driver. Now know that the woman who was killed was not pregnant, as the homer, homeowner says she claimed, and her alleged accomplice has been charged with murder. Gus is charged with murder by participating in a felony leading to death, residential burglary, residential robbery, grand theft firearm, elder abuse, and possession of a firearm by a felon. And the critical question tonight, will Greer be charged? Under California law, homeowners can defend themselves if they fear bodily injury or death, but Greer told me that Miller was running away when he shot her. And I come back and they see me with a gun and they run. I come down here and run, and so I shot the woman right there. And the lady didn't run fast as a man, so I shot her the back twice. And then he kept running, and I shot him, but then he, he had a whether he got a bullet or not. She says, don't shoot me, I'm pregnant, I'm with a baby, and I shot her anyway. You have no regrets about this, do you? None whatsoever. I had to do what I had to do, and I've never in my life shot anybody, killed anybody. I'm a good Christian. But when the time comes to defend yourself, you best do something. So obviously Gus is guilty for everything except arguably the murder. But what about the two older folks? Is Ruby truly guilty? What about Tom? Did he commit murder or manslaughter? Or was this all actually self-defense? Well, Ruby's husband and Gus's father has some really strong feelings about this case. She should go to hell for shooting somebody that says don't shoot. She only got a few months to live, and she never knew nothing about this. This is wrong for what they're doing to her. She was just getting a ride for my son. She didn't know what was going on. And a frail man in his 80s. He's been attacked in his own home by intruders. He has a right to self-defense. On the other hand, he did shoot a person who was trying to get away, so he wasn't in imminent danger himself, and the law says you can't shoot somebody under those circumstances. It's not so much uh, the location specifically, it's are you in fear of your life uh, wherever you are. It basically, you can defend yourself if you're in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death. Based on the information we have and what we can determine between now and the time we present this to the district attorney, they'll make the determination as to was it reasonable. Deputy District Attorney Janet Moore's report states that, quote, Thomas Greer is presumed to have held a reasonable fear of imminent peril of death or great bodily injury. She continues, Greer exercised his legal and legitimate right of self-defense when he shot and killed Andrea Miller. After a jury trial, Gus was found guilty of first-degree residential robbery and first-degree residential burglary and special allegations of great bodily injury and elder abuse. For this, he was given 12 years. Ruby pleaded no contest to one count of first-degree residential burglary and was given three years. Gus is still incarcerated as of the making of this video in July 2022, but he's up for parole by the end of the year. So much for 12 years. Unfortunately, I was unable to confirm whether any of the older people are still alive. But how about you? How do you feel about this outcome? Should Ruby have been held accountable? Should her medical conditions, whether real or imagined, have been taken into account? Should she have been given a differential treatment if she truly was about to die? And further, is Tom guilty of a crime? Leave a comment and let's continue the conversation. But right now, continue your YouTube binge with one of these videos. One is about an older man who is involved in a homicide, though in quite different circumstances. And the other one is one YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Either way, you can't go wrong.